What is up guys? Thank you guys for tuning in again to this full build video. Now this is a normal standard cockpit procedure. So just glued the pieces there and now I'm painting it uh, olive drab. Go ahead and uh, paint all of your other pieces olive drab while it's on the sprue. Why not? They're all laid out perfectly for that anyways. So just a good way to get all your parts painted a good primer base and then you can move on to the next step. Alright, so I put the black on already to all the basic parts. And now I'm just going to touch up some areas with silver. And in a minute, I'm actually going to be dry brushing all of this silver stuff. To highlight all of the areas that are pretty much hidden by the black. So it brings out all those corners like where it could have like worn off and stuff like that. That box actually turned out really well. I'm happy with that. And uh, it's really cool to see what silvering effects do and how cool you can make things look. So as you can see, you turned a boring green box into something that looks fresh and you didn't have to put too much work into it other than just knocking out those corners with the silver brush. And uh, that's all I did was just bring the corner into the middle of the box there. Along with all of the other cockpits too. So that is for the night lightning and you can see it has a different box in the back uh, because it had a radar dude in the back this is the droop snoop lightning the version b uh, i just i did variations of these uh, so i didn't have like the same color on everything for all three of these cockpits and i'm uh, just going to assemble the wings here they come in two pieces just like any, pretty much any uh, model. And just stick them together and put some light Tamiya cement on it. That seems to work pretty well for me. And I do tape the fuselage together because it was kind of coming up. Uh, here's the twin booms. I wonder who named the twin booms? Who came up? Why are they called booms? I don't get it. But anyways. So you're going to want to put the landing gear in first, obviously, and then um, put some cement on them after you squeeze them together. So what I do with all my gluing is I put a... Uh, like a nice glob or whatever in all the holes that connect of stretchy glue so pretty flexible glue that's not so hard and crisp and then what i'll do is i'll i'll do this application of thin cement and that just seems to just join everything together good and it holds everything together well too and as you can see here i'm putting on the boom struggling a bit and it just slides into place there the gap wasn't too bad but it still was a pretty a pretty uh pretty bad gap <laughs> i had a lot of mudding to do on this or puttying to do those are the guns that go in uh the marge and also the night lightning and the night lightning actually has an opening flap on its uh its nose there so you can actually look inside and the flap literally actually opens i thought that was a really cool feature for it All right, just stick that in there and there you have it. Now you have to figure out the nose weight. <laughs> I tried so hard. This just didn't work. I don't know what's a better method for using nose weight, but these little fishing weights, they suck. I put as many, I crammed as many as I could into that nose and it still it just barely does the job, so I have to figure something else out. I think what I'll do is use, I think what would be better would be um, 
would be RC weights and just freaking load it up. <laughs> so there you can see that hatch moves up and down. I just, I think that's such a cool feature. Pop the nose cone on and there you go. Got another P38. I'm gonna mud all those seams. There's a bunch of them. And since I made three P38s at the same time, yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff to do. Uh, that's for the droop snoop. And uh, just gonna pop this window in here for that version. You can see there. You actually have to cut that whole piece out. But it does leave an outline line to where you can trace it out. So that was helpful. And I just use micro crystal clear glue on all my clear parts. It's a nice flexible glue that uh, it sticks pretty good. Uh, I'd like to get some clear um, Tamiya glue. Uh, some people use that and it, it, that looks good too. It looks easier to use. So yeah, this is, so each P38 has a different malfunction of how I got nose weight into it. One of them has it in the engines, which I didn't even show. This one has it underneath the bombardier area. And then, obviously, you, you saw earlier, the night lightning has it right in the nose. N none of them worked. All right, so what I'm doing here is actually a custom seat. And it's really a lot easier than you might think. Uh, when I started, I was like, well, this didn't come with a seat. I didn't have any extra seats. And I was like, hey, how the heck am I going to do this? This is going to be difficult. No, not really. I literally took two pieces of plastic, sanded the corners down so it looked rounded, and glued them in place, as you can see. And then I took two side panels, little tiny itsy-bitsy side panels, popped those on as, like, kind of like little armchairs, kind of, you know. The seat might be a little bit out of scale, but... It looks really good after the fact. And then what I do is I take a white putty and just fill in all those seams. And this, this works so good. And obviously, you know, it's a water-based putty, so you, you wipe it off and, and it kind of like seams into all the cracks and stuff. It makes it look like there's a cushion almost. So I'm struggling with the camera work here, but... Yep, now I'm wiping out all the putty and stuff. And it looks good. And you can see with the putty, since it does dry hard, you can actually add textures with this putty. And you can like kind of make it look like something was there, something uh, is there. So like a cushion or, you know, a cloth or t something like that. So I added a little bit of texture on, onto the seat as well, just to make it look a little bit more realistic. There you can see I'm just loading it up even more with with weights. I'm just trying to weigh the airplane down. I probably didn't have to do this step, but since I had windows on it and it was like my fourth build, I was worried that you could see inside the windows and see those ugly fishing weights. So I just contrapted a, a little uh, a little extra piece and I popped it on top of those so that those panels would fit over it and uh it was it was literally a waste of time um yeah it was a waste of time i didn't have to do this but i did i learned some lessons from it and i kind of like the fact that i did it but at the same time it, it's not necessary guys you don't have to do this this was a mistake <laughs> but whatever we make those in modeling all the time doesn't matter it happens it's okay. All right, popping that uh, panel on. And and these were the areas where it was, it was a little rough with the sanding. Uh, the seams really did not go together that well. I don't know if it was the mistake by me of the fit or what, but yeah, it did not go together that well. As you can see, there's a lot of putty. And the putty I'm using is still the same. It's the water-based putty that you literally just take a little cotton swab and have a little water on it and just wipe it off. And all of, 
all of the putty like kind of seeps into the cracks and it fills it really nicely. Uh, if it's too big of a crack, I won't use this stuff. But for, for cracks like this and for a quick process, these are perfect for it. And what I do with this stuff is I just, I go straight for the paper towel. Uh, the first the first wipe off is going to be with a paper towel. And I, I have a wet swab there and I'm just constantly wetting it and paper toweling it and wetting it and paper toweling it and eventually you get in to no scenes. And, and it looks really good after the fact. Now, when you're wiping this stuff off, it doesn't take much. It literally just takes a few swipes and you got a smooth surface. Like here, I'm just being really light with it. I don't want to lose where it's built up and I, and I don't want to lose where it's actually in the cracks because there is a way to wipe this stuff off way too much. Uh, so this is, this is the major error that I did. Um, it gives you instructions on where to cut this thing out for version A, the night lightning. And uh, yeah, I cut it way too big. So I had to do some fixing on this bad boy. So I cut out a little piece and glued it to the bottom of there so that the second canopy would actually like sit in there good. So here's that clear piece and I'm just going to slide it in there and it actually had a really perfect fit but you slide it in and um, I used a knife on the bottom to push it up and to hold it <laughs> this this was a contraption let me tell you and um, so anyways where I cut right there on where the canopy goes I cut it way too big so the gap is like literally an eighth of an inch I wasn't getting a very good stick from the glue that I was using. Uh, maybe it was because of this clear stuff, I'm not sure. So I just popped a little thin CA on there and so it could seep in like to the sides better and I pushed it up. Now this is the other piece and I'm just gonna use my regular glue to stick that onto the clear surface. You can see in a, in a few how big this gap is and how, oh, look at that. Oh my goodness. it's. You never want to look in the model and see that gap. It's just awful towards the back of the canopy. So yeah, this I used real putty. I used real putty and that was the, the Tamiya thick putty or whatever. And um, yeah, you, you send it for a lot longer than what I showed. Uh, it definitely does not, it doesn't sand easy. This white stuff is, is just, it's a bear, man. It's a bear, but I got it. I got it pretty good and um, yeah, it, it worked out well. So now I'm just gluing those uh, clear pieces on and this is just gonna polish up the build. This is the Droop Snoop's nose. And there, you got three P38s. All right, let's get cracking on the painting. So I'm just uh, spraying in the clear parts with the olive drab. And um, I bought that huge thing of olive drab on Amazon for like 15 bucks. And best thing I ever bought, it lasts forever. Uh, so yes, you paint all your clear parts so that you can see the green on the inside. It makes it look a little nicer. And, um, and then you get to your first stage of weathering. But here I'm using surface primer on the whole model just to see like where my bad gaps are and if I missed anything you know I can I can see all the stuff that I had missed with the putty and that way I can be like alright well if I like this gap I, I don't like this gap I don't like this seam if there's anything that I need to fix you can tell by priming it and seeing how smooth your surface is And I just primed the whole model. 
All right, so first step of weathering. I painted these areas silver, and then I applied water and sprinkled salt on top of the water. I used an oil-based paint, so the water didn't really disperse very well. It kind of bubbled up. Um, but I don't even know if I did this the correct way anyways, the salt weathering technique. But now what I'm doing is taking that Vallejo primer and just coating it because I wanted some olive drab to come through as well. And uh, yeah, like I said, I don't know if this is the correct way to do this or not. I'm really not sure. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> you'll see later how it came out. But um, it's definitely interesting using that type of salt. I don't even know if I use the correct type of salt. So anyways, I repeated the process, put more water on, put more salt on, and then did my final coat of black. And pay attention here. If you ever want to salt an airplane, whatever this does, it is spooky. I sprayed it black and pay attention to the black. All of the paint around the black literally disperses and it spreads out. And it, it spooked me. Really spooked me. So I'm painting it black here. And you can see what I'm talking about. On the wing, it was fully covered black. But now you can see... All the green is like showing through. You never want this to happen on any of your builds, guys. Don't. I would recommend not even doing the stupid salt technique. Uh, honestly, this was freaky. Um, you ever want to be scared modeling? Bingo. Do the salt trick. You want to be scared? Do the salt trick. You'll find out for yourself. It is not fun. This was very scoop spooky. But I learned a lot from it, and honestly, I would do it again if I was making some type of, um, like, beat down, broken up, you know, crash site in Japan or something like that. I would, I would definitely use it on that. So I got, the, I got all the black down. It took, like, three coats, and uh, now what I'm doing is I'm just going to dry brush all that salt off with a little bit of water and... Um, and try to get some of that chunkiness out of the paint because the salt like stayed on the airplane while I painted over it I like I said I don't know exactly how to do this I was just gung-ho about doing the salt trick and it ended up working out in my favor I'm happy with the result it's just uh it was scary man I I I've had a few incidences where I've had really good ideas and it's completely ruined models. So this was one that could have, but didn't. All right, so the brush was not cutting it. So I had to skip straight to the knife section. And then I, I took way too much off with the knife and uh, or put too much salt on in the first place anyways. And I had to touch up some areas here. Um, yeah, this was... I'll tell you what, this was a science experiment. This was fun for the time being, but watching it later, it's like, eh, I think I would have rather did something else, maybe, instead of trying the salt trick. Um, but now I have much different methods to, this is a long time ago that I did this video, uh, but now I have much different methods to do um, chipping methods. So stay tuned for those videos coming out. Uh, here, I didn't do my research on this model, and I didn't realize that these were supposed... I followed the directions and didn't realize that these were supposed to be olive drab instead of black. So, both my P-38s have black, uh, like, areas on this instead of olive drab, which... The olive drab would have looked a lot nicer. Um, yeah, that was my bad on the research end. <clears throat> That's actually a really good point to make. If you're building a model, and if you are an accurate guy, and if you really do, like, 
want to make your models as accurate as possible. <laughs> Research the airplane. Don't miss out on that step. Uh, it's, it's happened like four times to me where I've just followed the directions and did it the way the directions did it. And it doesn't work out because then you get done with your model and then you find out after the fact. And you're like, oh, crap. Oh, no. What am I doing? And the whole thing's basically... I mean, in my opinion, these aren't ruined, but I would definitely rather have olive drab. So, uh, this I use Blue Angel Blue. Um, this was this was a project uh, to get these circles on. I didn't have any tape, and I wasn't going to buy any, so I just handed it. Um, and it worked out well. But this blue, it just looks so nice. This Blue Angel Blue looks so nice. And especially when it has a nice gloss on it, on top of it, the, yeah, I, I really like these spinners. They're probably my fin favorite spinners in the bunch. I would definitely suggest buying some uh, stretchy thin tape and doing it that way. Um, this was this was a challenge to get right. But um, if you are skilled with a brush, it definitely is possible. I mean, you can't even tell that there's any whoops or anything, because there isn't. It came out really well uh, just hand brushing it. Uh, I could suggest this way too. But if you're not very skilled with a brush or you got shaky hands, I definitely would suggest buying thin stretchy tape to wrap around that nose cone and, and uh, then you get a nice, polished straight line and you could also airbrush it if you have that tape too all right so now to my favorite part of any build is the decals um this is literally my favorite part i love doing decals because it's just like it's polishing it up and it's putting all the cool um the cool like designs on the airplane uh and and this is really where the airplane starts to come into fruition so <clears throat> I'm using basic methods guys I just have some warm water and I have uh, some tweezers tweezers are good for decals um, but I think putting a little bit of tape on the end of the tweezers is a good idea just a little bit of duct tape you just wrap the end of it and and pop it on there that's that, that seems to work for me Anyways, I'm using micro saw and micro set. And one, you stick it on, you apply to the area where you're gonna put the decal, and then the other, you apply it on top, and it actually it makes it set better. It makes it like absorb into the paint, and it looks like the decal's painted on rather than just a sticker on top of an airplane. But um, yeah, this is when I didn't figure out how to move decals, and I still am so terrible about applying de decals. They literally, I'll try to put it on so super straight, super straight still, and it'll be like completely sideways. So, and it's a bit cringy watching me use a knife to pull these off, but uh, the exacto knife works fine. It's just uh, you put it in the clear areas where you're not going to see it, but. Um, I know it's probably frowned upon by some people, but uh, I don't know. I just, I hate dinking around. I hate it when it doesn't move and I try to move it. And so I use an X-Acto knife sometimes. And, and most of the time I use tweezers and putting a little bit of duct tape on the end of the tweezers is actually a pretty good idea too. And here you go with Bombardier. As you can see, it came out pretty good. Uh, I use basic silver stuff on this. I did not no silver stuff before this video so I just I painted it with basic aluminum and um, I highlighted it with actual actual silver paint and uh, it came out like this and it came out good I, I mean for a basic p38 if, if you just want one for the collection you don't want to spend a lot of time on it I think this is the way to go with it it looks good definitely not as good as maybe foiling it or um, or other methods but uh, yeah I like this because um, all the cool designs on it. I like the triangles I don't know why I do like the triangles on airplanes I just found a p 
picture of a Mustang with a triangle on it. I was like, oh yeah, that's a sweet Mustang. But uh, for some reason, yeah, I like the triangles and, and all the letters on this model and it's just sweet. Here I'm just demonstrating uh, squeezing out all the bubbles. Um, you definitely don't want to have your decals on a, a bubbly surface. You don't want any bubbles left in there. It's not going to stick as well and, um, and yeah, you just want to go down the seams there. Alright, so I already did all the music stuff for this video, and picture stuff, and other stuff, and definitely found a boring part, so apologize for that. <laughs> uh, I love filming this, I love filming just the stars and stripes and the US emblem, um, I don't know why, but I, I just, I don't know, I feel like I have to have it in all my videos of what I'm doing, so. So here you go for this one. This is the first first one of this rendition. Um, but yeah, just take the tweezers and adjust it to where I need it and then squeeze all the bubbles out. So what I'm going for here is just a nice light oil wash and uh, I'm using an oil paint, a Model Master oil and uh, this is a brown one on the top and a black one for the panel lines. And I didn't go too far into weathering this model. I wanted a nice uh, air show finish. So here we have some Model Master uh, weathering techniques. This is a powder that you actually use. Um, and actually you can use this powder as a liquid as well. You can actually mix this in with water too and apply it that way as well if you want it to like seep into cracks. But here I'm using the dry method. I kind of wanted a, a crisp like um, crusty kind of look towards that supercharger. And uh, as you can see like it just brought so much life uh, to that just plain black supercharger. Uh, super happy with with how that one came out and that's the that, that's the product right there um, I have a whole bunch of colors now of that stuff I actually found a picture of this I think I said this in the other video online of it being like really greeny and yellowy um, so I took some of this rust color and I just put that on the model to spread around a little bit and it, it came out just like the picture but yeah, this stuff is really cool. I've, I've actually done a lot of stuff with it. And I actually, in some of my cockpits, I use it and put like some, it's basically like sand color and it makes it look like it has dirt inside this, the, uh, the cockpit. It's really cool stuff. So here, I painted, obviously you can see, I painted those panels silver, for whatever reason. Um, I, I think it's this door, I, I think it's accurate. Uh, I think they did have those silver. But uh, basically what I'm doing is I'm trying to make it look like it has fuel on it. Um, I've seen some jet guys airbrush like crazy and, and make their exhaust systems look like it has like fuel on it and stuff so I'm just trying to mimic that it, this is a first rendition of this and basically what I'm doing is I take a really light um, watered down paint and then what I'm doing here is just dipping it in the water and adding more water to just thin it out and spread it out and it kind of looks like Barney but I don't know it came out after it dried, it came out a lot better, and you can't really see that unless you see the photo shoot at the end. So yeah, I'm just taking this red here and gonna mix it, kind of mix it in with it because I saw some purples and some oranges and stuff uh, on some examples. And I'm just gonna take that purple and do the same method. Just stick it on there a little bit and make it kind of look like it has fuel on it. I don't know. 
it it worked pretty well for what I was trying to do and and I, like I said after it, it was dry it looked a lot more realistic than what it does right now <laughs> so yeah it was fun trying it out though but I definitely would go about it differently nowadays you can see there, I was like, ah, that's not going to work. I need to rust this up a little bit. So I put some rust weathering on it and some sand. And um, that, that covered it up just enough. It makes it look like it's rusty, and it makes it look like it has fuel on it. So pretty beat up model, though, as you can see. And what was weird about it is after this had all set and everything, all of that paint there actually ended up showing up black. Like it's really not as bad as it looks. And these are the custom lights that I have in it. What I'm doing here is taking a paintbrush and sticking it into a piece of cardboard, bard, and bard, 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 and then cutting it out. And then here you can see I got a little light out of it. There it is. That's that little light. This worked. I definitely like the finish of the light with it being the plastic, the um, tin foil, but. Uh, but yeah, there's the covering for the light, and what I'm doing is just going to stick this to a clear uh, clear piece. And those are those little lights that I cut out with a paintbrush. So I'm going to stick these lights to the clear piece, cut to the size of the actual light that I'm supposed to have in there. And the tricky one was a little tiny one. Uh, I might recommend... I figured out you could use like a hole punch maybe. <laughs> Other than a paintbrush, and then you can use the the end of a paintbrush to just indent that, indent the uh, hole punched tin foil. But um, this worked. This worked good. I like the finish of that little light. You can barely see it inside the model, anyways. Take that. Yep. Stick it in there where it's supposed to go, and then you cut off the excess. And here you go, guys. Enjoy the rest of the model show, and I will see you next time. out to all of my subscribers out there. Thank you so much. 
Uh, you guys are awesome. If you haven't subscribed, please consider to do so. It helps me out a lot. You can also support me on Patreon where uh, you can get exclusive access to videos that no one else gets to see. So go ahead and check that out. 15% um, of YouTube and Patreon's earnings are actually going to go to sending these little gliders out there with inspirational message and little ResMod stickers to kids in cancer facilities and mental health disability uh, facilities, also some foster care facilities as well. Um, we're starting in Michigan, so help me out with this project. I'm really excited to send some hope and love and joy to these kids out there who might want to fly a little foamy bird. So go ahead and check that out as well. If you want to follow me along on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Tumblr, I think all of them, uh, go ahead and check out the description below and all of the links are going to be right there, Patreon included. So check those out guys and uh, thank you for watching the video again and like I always say, let's get back to building.